or why don't you give us a bit of a heads up on who you are, where you like, you know, where you based, what your product is, and then we can we can dive into another role play with Morgan. Absolutely, let's keep it short and sweet, shall we? Um, yeah, my name is Michael Sikic. I'm a Canadian. Um, I'm living in Vienna, and I work for B2Match. Uh, it's an event management uh, software company based uh, here in Vienna, Austrian um, grassroots. And uh, that's what we do. That's our business. We make sure that people have events and they connect uh, in any shape and form um, that we can in this environment that we live in. Cool. Amazing. Again, another really interesting space at the moment. So, um, yeah. yeah. What, um, uh, let's uh, let's hear your ring. Maybe it's slightly different from Switzerland. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll okay. dive in. If, if Morgan, you want to pick this one up as well. I'm ready. Ding dong ding, ding a ling a ling. <laughs> this is Morgan. Hey Morgan, uh, so glad I got you. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Good, good, good. Hey, my name is Michael. Um, I work for uh, one of the largest IT companies in Austria, B to Match, and we want to make your event coming up on the 12th of December the best event that you've had so far. How's that sound to you? I mean, it, sound, it sounds great so far, but they tell me if it sounds too good to be true, I should be skeptical. So what, what's going on here? Hey, well, let me ask you a question first. Uh, you know, it's a crazy time we're living in. How have you been spending your days working? Are you working from home? Are you, you know, in the office? Is it some sort of hybrid? Yeah, I'm a hybrid. So I'll spend three days at home, two days in the office as of right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, so typically that's kind of what we see with a lot of people now, you know, they're doing this hybrid or if they're working from home and your event can be exactly that. So at B2Match, we have done for the past 10 years, virtual, physical, and now hybrid events. So we specialize in creating this event, making the most of those connections, turning these great ideas that you have into reality. So uh, do you have a little bit of time to talk more about this? I mean, how, how do you do that? There's a lot of event companies out there that do the same thing as you. So what makes you all different? Well, we've been, we've been uh, I guess, the trailblazers in event management. We were out there before anyone else. Um, we have a strong connection with the EEN, that's the Enterprise Europe Network. And that's kind of what we kind of based our business on uh, 10 years ago. So we have this know-how and this experience and this knowledge of what actually works in event. Um, how we can get these people to connect. You know, one of the typical pains we get from event organizers is that um, participation and the engagement of their participants is low. So one way that we can kind of foster that with our platform is by giving you the opportunity as the organizer to impersonate these participants that you have in your event. So you can go into the platform as let's say John Doe you can get him into events, sign him up to things. You can have him actually make these one-to-one -one matchmaking connections so that when John gets onto the platform, he says, hey, this is great. All this stuff is already ready for me. I just have to click and go. How does that sound to you? That sounds cool, but it's not really what I'm interested in when it comes to my events. Okay. What would you say is what you're looking for in your events? What's, yeah, what's I the mean... pinnacle? I, th I think I think the the critical piece across the board is when we do events. Everything you mentioned in terms of the personation is cool. We just want to be able to get as many people there as possible. How do we drive demand, and how do we make sure when we drive demand that we can capture those lists and send them out in an effective manner? That's really the main thing we're focused on right now. Okay. Yeah. So definitely with our platform, we have a few options there for you. Um, one of them is our notification system. So essentially when you uh, have an event with B2Match, you get an event platform and event website. From that website, you get to send out your messages to whoever you like. Um, you can import lists from previous events or an Excel file, and then you can contact your um, participants that way. Um, we also have an upcoming events page on our own website. So that kind of gives you a little more traffic on your page. Um, other than that, you know, there's also um, our marketplace, which generates a lot of um, buzz for participants and other kind of um, or companies and organizations to create things that other people can see. So then that really kind of gets people in this zone of looking at your event and seeing what you have to offer and why they should come and attend your event. 
Okay. Anything else, Morgan? What else would, would you like in your event? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's the those are the main things. I mean, really, we're just trying to drive as much attendance as possible. But look, you've given me a lot of great information. Um, I just want to be able to absorb all of this. Is there like information you can send to me and maybe I could talk to someone on my team about this? Absolutely, Morgan. Uh, why don't I just confirm your email and I'll send you an email after our chat. Um, there'll be a lot of uh, links on there to have even more information than what I've given you. And then I'll also have a meeting link in there. So uh, whatever works for you, let's maybe set up some time, have a video call, and then I can actually show you how the tool works because it's, I think, the best when you can actually see how the platform works firsthand. How does that sound to you? Yeah, ab absolutely. Awesome, Morgan. Okay. Well, it was great chatting with you today and hopefully we can connect soon. All right, thank you so much. Very great. Bye. Bye. Awesome, thank you so much, Michael. Um, pressure situation, yeah, it was you did a really, 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 really great job. long without showing you my platform. <laughs> <laughs> um, Morgan, do you have any immediate feedback? Yeah, so I mean, first and foremost, it very knowledgeable about the product, right? I mean, that's hopefully everyone like really understood that, like how knowledgeable you were about the product. Like that's like, that's like the battle itself is actually being able to articulate what's going on um, across the board. And I think you actually had a really good flow and you have a, a really good inflection in tone and voice. Uh, that's also critical when you're doing these calls. Um, I felt like we, we, for time's sake, that's why I cut you off, but like we could have kept going on that call, right? If we wanted to, it was just like your pace and your tone. I think ultimately like the, the one thing that I would tell you is to cut out as much jargon as you can. So when you say like largest or we've been a trailblazer, these are things that I absolutely don't care about and your prospects don't either. So those are things that I would just throw out because the information you were providing would lead me to believe that you are the trailblazer. You, Apple's a great example. Apple never says we're the trailblazer. You know that they are. Like, it's not a conversation. Like, we know that, right? Nike doesn't say that. They, we know that they're the trailblazer. So you don't have to say it to say that, hey, we are. It's just like the information you give me leads me to believe that. So that's what I would tell you because you gave me a lot of good information. It's just taking out the jargon, asking some questions in the upfront, and all the points you delivered would have been relevant because the first part you talked about wasn't relevant to me, and then we had to pivot. But you did a good job pivoting there. But David, you, I know we have – we're like over time, but I know you can wrap I it up. Know, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm no, really quickly. I, 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 yeah, I, I picked up on exactly the same things Morgan did. I thought um, – I, I, quick question, Michael. Do you get a lot of people that say um, – can you send me an email on this or like ask for more information like um, in, in follow-up? Uh, typically we just send out emails after our follow-up call and okay. give them the information. Yeah. So that's your natural next step anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I actually think you could, you could reduce the amount of effort that you have to do on there by keeping things more concise. I find that people that tend to just, you know um, yeah, you, you, you when you give like a lot of information very quickly, um, our brains take a long time to process this kind of information, especially if you're calling someone like me. So um, that the the biggest indicator of, of kind of like, you know, potentially giving too much information on a call is is um, is people asking for, for, for more information so they can go and digest that. If it's your natural next step, that's great. But I reckon like, you know, you might be able to get people into like, you know, follow up calls uh, quicker and maybe the next step after that, if we're keeping things more concise. And then, but the biggest thing for me was exactly what Morgan just said there um he um i'm a really big believer of like we we essentially give like a tiny bit of context here at cognizant you probably heard it on john's call a tiny tiny bit of context um in terms of what like our space and what what our product does um but then immediately we're asking questions about process um and we're, we're trying to understand like um okay so so the key question um in the case of uh, of your company would be are you hosting events not right now what do they look like what's important with with those events i'd ask those questions up front like to almost demand that off the off the um prospect which can be hard um before kind of giving them it, uh, the pitch because then we're making it as relevant as possible to their use case right and that's going to really like how we resonate and again just cut cut out kind of wasted words which will um end up making your prospect very unengaged so yeah i know i'm echoing exactly morgan's point but i think i think they're really important and actually common mistakes that you see across the board um but thank you so much again michael